views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. The following audio is via a Skype call. Genetic Living Radio is a conscious reality creation journey. Tune in each month as Rick and Grace Paris teach you the innovative approach and new philosophy that will shift your entire paradigm of what it is to be a human being. Synergenetic Living is a living, breathing, conscious experience. As a shaman for 20 years, Rick Paris has been guiding people to fuller existences since his first workshop in 1995. He is well-versed in a wide variety of healing arts, including being an Enneagram expert. Grace Paris serves synergenetic living clients powerfully and beautifully by embodying the fundamental role of a feedback provider, graciously guiding people to their own realizations and higher purposes. On this show, Rick and Grace will share with listeners the key to unlocking the infinite potential of human consciousness in order to create a life of preference. Learn to author your own destiny with Synergenetic Living Radio. Hey, everybody, and I'm Dr. Pat, and I get to have this time with both Rick and Grace. Uh, uh, You know, this is for me part of the journey that the three of us have said yes to taking together. And it has been so wonderful to be in the process of watching Synergenetic Living come to life, uh, to watch how life then, you know, steps forward for each of us, connects us closer, and how Synergenetic Living can help you to create the lives you truly desire. You know, the first time we did a show uh, with Rick and Grace, you got to know a bit about, you know, Rick and his journey as well as Grace. Today, part of that conversation is going to be about what I love that they're calling open to the power of the between. Now, this is interesting because paradoxically, we get to be, and then we get to be again and again and again. Today, we're going to talk about our choice to be physical and what physical incarnation is or what it isn't. Um, thank you both. What a great show. I'm really excited about this. Synergenetic living. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so excited to be. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm excited, too, because, you know, this it's funny. I was kind of thinking about, you know, the show today and I was thinking about the people that have been close in my life and, you know, my mother especially and the choice that she made uh, not to stay in her physical body anymore. And yet it's uh, at the same time. I think there is so little we know about our own incarnation, this physical incarnation. But Rick, you shared in the first show we did, you shared your story, your journey about this. Um, some people don't believe that physica- being physical is a choice. And I'd love to hear, you know, what your discovery is as, as well, Grace, you as well. Yeah, well, they just don't know it because part of the, part of the, maybe the way that we are evolving right now and evolution is a lifting in complexity and the human, the human being has been going through an evolutionary process. And in every process, there comes moments where things must change and they have to change for a more sophisticated level of operating. You know, like a lot of times people, I don't want this old way of doing things. Well, the old way of doing things even the government, how many people are pushing off the government like, oh, they're manipulating. There's all this conspiracy theory stuff going on. Well, that's the way that you're framing it. And if you frame it that way, then you're going to find more and more conspiracy things because that's the way you're framing the world because you're not used to being an authority. So when it looks like the system is limiting you, it's really more of a reflection of your internal your internal resistances that are showing up. So 
physical reality is a mirror of your unconscious mind. And the more that you can become conscious of that unconscious mind, not to be confused with being unconscious, Mm -hmm. but your unconscious mind is running the entire experience of reality while your conscious mind is learning how to direct that experience consciously. So you can become more of the God being you're meant to be. And so now at this time, this is one of the reasons I came back to experience this was realizing in the point of evolution, this is a monumental or pivotal turn for humanity. Like I say, 2012 and all these, these, uh, what am I looking for? The word the, cultures? No, no, no. The, um, oh, my brain. In the morning, <laughs> my brain never works as good as it should. You know? No matter what time I wake up, it's still morning. Um, but yeah, the way that we frame our. Ex- ah, I'm totally lost in my mind right now. Sorry. But the physical experience is a reflection of you on your path to becoming more of a God being. So it's like Mm -hmm. being here is long division. You really can't create an experience here unless you understand the process of creation, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody knows, Oh, things can happen magically or things can happen forcefully or things happen. But everything in physical reality is an experience of your limitation because physical reality needs resistance in order for it to take its form. Mm -hmm. And as we're always saying, you know, form follows function. As soon as you understand the function behind a form and you alter the function, the form changes. So being physical is an experience to understand that. And so humanity has just gotten to the point where they actually are creating reality themselves now. And so it looks pretty messy because anything that you've created as a structure over time becomes a prison. And anybody kind of would realize that, but they don't recognize it very often in the big picture. Like, you know, let's just say religion. I'm sure religion at one time was a yeah. great idea and it was supposed to lift humanity, but because religion is a static construct and we keep growing, we've outgrown it. And the only thing we know to say now is, Hey, there's all these people out there, people, I don't know who these people are, but somebody's out there manipulating us and everyone else instead of understanding, no, the the limitations that I created as a place to keep safe has now morphed into a prison. I don't have enough space to grow. I don't have enough space to choose. And what we teach people is as you're going through your process and you feel limitations, it's about understanding what those limitations are. Yeah. What are the metaphors? What are the functions behind Mm -hmm. these limitations so I can internally understand what I have to shift to get the outside world to make a shift? And controlling the outside Mm -hmm. world is what most people do. You know, go ahead. One of the things I want to ask you about this, because I think it's really cool, and I think it's also some sometimes a misconception, because I want to get back to something you said about friction. Sometimes when we hear the word friction, we have uh, an interpretation of it. Now, for many of us, you know, we have this notion of friction and, and, and it doesn't have to be something harsh, something sharp. You know what I'm saying? Friction right. is, is I've this- walked across the living room floor and, oh, I'm creating a little friction in the rug. It doesn't mean I'm walking across the living room floor and I've got a shrill, sharp pain that goes up through my entire body. Yeah. And, and the thing is, again, form is following a function. So however you are calibrated to see the function is how you usually assume the form is. Well, you know, that means da, 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 da. Well, you're the one that decides what the definition of what I just Mm. went through is. And if you define it by a way you've always defined it, you're going to be in a pattern consistently. And Mm -hmm. you create a pattern in order to understand how to release it. You're not really doomed to keep living a life of misery or a life where I'm never good enough or I never get enough or any of these things. These are just old mindsets that you haven't understood fully how to release and adopt a new one that is wider, deeper, higher. And so you get stuck. So like you said, friction in physical reality, you know, the reason that, well, let's not say that because Uh 
don't don't understand that. But everything in re- in physical reality is an exper- an expression of friction, of resistance. It doesn't can't take shape if it doesn't have resistance. So the resistance is basically our beliefs. Our belief systems are the resistance that we create in order for physical reality to hold a structure. Yeah. So yeah, if you label resistance or any limitation, right. oh, this is bad, I got to get out, uh, avoid it. You know, I don't like negative people in my life. This is really common lately that we've been talking to lots of people. You know, I just want to walk away from the negative people in my life. Well, the negative people are there to teach you something. If you don't really understand and not to teach you to walk away, that's not really being a reality creator. Mm-hmm. What it's teaching me is there's a limitation in my, my experience in the person this is why the power in between. Oftentimes you're pissed off and you find somebody to get in an argument with because they're pissed off and then you both <laughs> find this, this and you guys get an argument together because you're looking for a way to express the anger and the rage. And in synergenetic living, beliefs precede reality. And that's a very simple statement, but people really have a tough time with it at first. Like, you're saying all my experiences are a function of the way I believe about yeah. myself? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you never make enough money because you don't believe you can. Right. And beliefs are just opinions we hold with convictions. They're never based in a fact or experience. You know, how many people have a strong religious belief around any particular religion? And they don't have any proof. Or, and they'll say, well, that's faith. Well, it's not really faith. It's just you putting a tremendous amount of significance on the idea and therefore anything that happens in my life I calibrate it to measure it through this lens of whatever religion it is so you know if I see a miracle oh, God came down and God shined upon those I'm calibrating that those are the reasons that it went on if I have a better stronger lighter more free system to view things from I'll see things in a whole new way and I'll begin to use it as a learning process rather than having mm-hmm. it's an outside it's an outside force it's the outside government controlling things god controls everything the universe controls everything so it disempowers people and they don't even realize that you they lose their ability to respond with these frames and so yes. it it's really understanding the power of being a human being is your ability to respond it's why america has the potential to always be the greatest country regardless because we're a mixture of diversity Mm -hmm. and the way that we have the ability to respond is different than anybody else. We don't come from one mindset, one way of being, one tradition. We're a multitude of traditions operating from a multitude of facets. We have the ability to be free and ability to choose. And that's where real power comes in physical reality. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a grace. I heard you chuckle a little bit cause I was, I was chuckling myself a little bit. Um, you chuckling know, sometimes, about- yeah. Chuckling because you, you know, I don't know, some days I wake up and, you know, I've been at different points in my life and I've been wondering, man, where did that person come from? that I have in my life right there. I mean, you know, what tree did they fall out of right here in my lap, right in my, and you know, it is a little chuckling at first because we take a look at it as if it has nothing to do with us. And I, I'm curious about that, Grace, because I heard you chuckling a little bit there. (laughs) Yeah, I, I think, well, to back up even further. Yeah. To back up even further, when Rick was saying, um, "Sorry, I'm I'm kind of lost in my thought." Um, like meeting people halfway and yeah, and the power between it's for the longest time, it was such an external experience, and like you said, I I didn't really give significance to the people that were showing up, and mm-hmm. and I was like in a lot of pain and suffering, and. And oh, here, it was coming back to the point of in your evolutionary path, there comes a point where you recognize the need for change. And um, it's it's not until that happens. The space between you is an argument. You have to take responsibility for your contribution to the argument. And a lot of times people are negative judging each other in these arguments. I don't like these people around me. Therefore, I'm going to avoid them. 
But then the next thing you know, everybody's looking like this one person I'm attempting to avoid because really I'm creating it in a way to move past it. And if I don't see the space between me and something else as part of the way I'm calibrated, the way I'm looking at things, I'm not going to be empowered to be able to change them. I'm not going to know what to change because in the minute I negative judge something, I'm boxing it up, I'm putting it on the shelf and I'm not responding to it appropriately anymore. I'm separating from it each time I see it. So each time I see it, there's no chance of changing it because I'm not embracing it and understanding. Oh, it's like if somebody's really mad and you're not mad, and you're, or at least maybe consciously you're not mad, and you're like, wow, dude, you're really going off. I, I'm not sure what your problem is. or And you don't really get engaged. People usually go off and find somebody else to yell at, or they, they can't hold that intensity because you're not contributing to the intensity. So the space between us is the measuring device that we use to see what choices are being reflected right now, conscious or unconscious. If I'm not conscious of it, I have to become, try to figure it out and become conscious so I have an opportunity to change it. Yeah. If I can't bring something conscious, I can't change it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I've heard you say the future creates the present. And, you know, then the question mark is around for a lot of people is that, well, wait a minute, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. As a matter of fact, if you Google the word stuck, uh, exponentially, that word has uh, grown uh, almost 500 percent in like five years. Stuck, wow. stuck, stuck. And yeah. so the you question is, yeah, bro. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. So you're stuck. We get it. Now what are you going to do about it, right? Exactly. It's like, I don't know. I keep I keep thinking I'm stuck instead of looking <laughs> at the space between and go, what am I stuck in? Am I stuck in mud? Am I stuck in this? Am I stuck in that? What am I stuck in? Let me, if you're measuring the space between you and another, you'll find out exactly what I'm stuck. It's in this, the problem itself carries the solution. So you've got to be able to look at it. So like I said, yeah, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. That's all that they're doing, and that's the pattern of the past. They look at it instead of saying, oh, this this problem has the solution for me to release it within the problem. But if I say I'm stuck and I know I'm comfortable with being stuck, then I stay and I'm stuck and I'm uncomfortable. I don't have a way to recalibrate what's happening. I don't have a different way to look at it so I can get unstuck. And, you know, the person sits there and I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, Mm -hmm. I'm stuck. Yeah, that's your mind. That's your mind stuck on a past pattern and not understanding how to release the pattern and in Mm -hmm. the problem. And that's why we know, oh, my God, I just dating the same person I was dating last time, just in a different package. So you're trying to tell yourself what you're trying to move beyond to be even more connected. This blockage that I keep seeing between me and another is the obstacle I need to overcome in order to have more love, more caring. And if I avoid those patterns, I never get a chance to disrupt them. I get a never chance to confront and I never get a chance to heal them. So even I'm stuck, I'm stuck is just a repetitive way to look at it. You're not Mm -hmm. stuck. You're in a pattern. Right. (laughs) But but in that pattern... It means at some level that we're living in our past. Correct. Living, breathing. Do something more than once, you're in the past. Yes. Even if if you like it, you're still in the past. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Because if I'm not, I can either create reality or I can allow reality. And most people are allowing. This is why they're feeling out of control and they don't like what's going on because they're allowing it and they haven't really figured out what choices do I have to make to become empowered over this. You know, it's like if you really start processing your anger and your rage and you get that out of your system before you know it, you're not really mad. You're feeling pretty good and you're not attracting anybody else who's angry because you're not angry anymore. So you don't need to have angry people in your life. They might be on the news. They might be farther away, a greater distance instead of in your face. And the greater responsibility you want to take, if I want people even on the news to be better, if I take a deeper 
wider perspective internally, remove the, the unconscious rage, then the unconscious outside world is not expressing that to me. I can't even remember the last time I had an angry person in front of me. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, you know, I am so glad you, you brought that up. I mean, it's interesting that we're talking about that. You know, I had an experience last week. And what I realized in that experience was I didn't see the person as angry. I could literally sense their fear, absolute fear. And it wasn't about what we were actually talking about. There was this other thing. And I want to ask you, where does fear come in in the between? Where does fear show up here? Well, that's really great because you know you have people like marion williamson out there saying it's either love or it's fear it's one or the other and the thing is that's so mm. incorrect frame to give uh, such a powerless frame mm. it's not understanding what fear is fear is your north compass in in reality creating if you're afraid of something what's happened is you've created a belief structure between you and something else in order to stay away from something that i'm afraid of Mm -hmm. What you're afraid of, hang on one second, what you're afraid of, Mom, no. hang on, somebody's making some noise. Well, let's do this. Let's go to a quick break. Benny, let's yeah. go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about fear, love, and the in-between. Rick and Grace Paris joining us here today. This is Synergenetic Living Radio. We're going to take a short break. And by the way, you have any questions for Rick? 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. We're going to take a short break, everybody. Mr. Benny, we'll be right back. Known for his keen sense of humor, contagious smile, and extensive esoteric wisdom, EJ translates deep spiritual wisdom into practical advice to empower you to live your happiest, most fulfilled experience. Mystic Living Radio, deep spiritual wisdom, practical advice with EJ, Eliyahu Jihan. This hit show delivers profound experiences for all who want to live life to their deepest desires. Tune in monthly for Mystic Living Radio. Learn more by visiting vitaltransformation.org. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Are you tired of being bloated and nauseous? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know eating unhealthy foods eventually leads to an unhealthy digestive system? Did you know eating the most healthy, nutritious food doesn't necessarily result in a healthy body? The stomach must be healthy in order to properly digest, metabolize, and utilize even the best of nutrition. Without proper digestion from the stomach through the intestinal tract, the nutritious value is not absorbed and the improperly digested food can be more toxic to your body than helpful. 
You can be doing all the right things and getting all the wrong results. In fact, other organs may also be interfering with your stomach's ability to digest. Contact us today for your appointment at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. Or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. You're listening to Synergenetic Living Radio with Rick and Grace Paris. Joining me today, I am getting to co-host with them. Um, You know, today's show, for those of you out there, is open to the power of the between. And so the question really is, one, do we know what that is? And two, do we know what to do if, in fact, we do know what that is and actually experience it? But before we start to talk about the relationship between love and fear and get back to what Rick was saying, um, I want to make sure that folks know, first of all, how do they find out more about you? Um, How do they get to work with you? All of the above. Oh, awesome. So you can find us at SynergeneticLiving.com. And right now we're offering an illumination session. And this is very special. Rick is going to be on these with us. And this is the easiest way to work with us. Rick is a genius at reverse engineering patterns and finding the function of what's behind a limiting pattern. So if you recognize that you're going around and around with something, This is for you and it's gold. You'll have the aha, the awareness, and then we can get, uh, we can lay out how to continue working with us, but that's really where you want to get started. And it's beautiful. I've, I've, yeah, I I just, I'm always blown out of what comes out of this. And I really, I encourage you if if you're having a sensing that there's more out there, Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Um, You you know, and this is part of really looking at the change we are really desiring to create. You you know, one of several conversations that we're going to have moving forward. Um, But before the break, you know, we were talking about this idea of fear, love, fear, love, fear, love. And, you know, pick one or the other and life is going to be just just dandy. And Rick, you started to talk about, well, wait a minute. That is not necessarily true. And you started to tell us why that is. Right. Well, love and fear are a great paradox. And again, if you can stay between paradoxes, you're actually in the most powerful place a person could possibly Mm. be. Mm -hmm. Because that's where there's great power. What most people do is they decide on one side or the other and they stick to it because a lot of times they're afraid of the other side. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to love something and you're really going to love it, what's going to happen is you're going to create a lot of significance around this thing of love, whether it's an animal, a business, a person, whatever Mm -hmm. it is, your country, you give it your religion, you give it great significance. And in that significance, in a physical reality, it gets a lot of density. It, It becomes very meaningful to the person. And at the point that it becomes meaningful, what's going to happen is you're going to be afraid of loss. Mm. Fear of loss is love's greatest pain. And so when you are in love, really in love, the first thing you're going to experience is the fear of loss. And so the only way to get past that fear of loss is to truly love more. A lot of people go into control. And what's really, really happening is people have emotions they like and they have emotions they don't like. It's like having a color... You know, the first time you get crayons and you get like eight colors in the box and you're all thrilled to death with the eight colors. And then one day you see like the 72 color box. And, you know, of course, there's ones in there all the time that are pointing (laughs) shop brand new for years that nobody ever pulls out of the box. Right, right. But they're emotions. And if you decide that some of these emotions are emotions that I don't like, you you limit your ability to respond. So if I say I don't like fear, fear is too scary and I don't want to overcome it. And then I do a little simplistic thing. Like I split fear from love. You're never really going to care about anything because the minute you're loving some, you're going to get scared. And then what you're going to say is, well, I'm not in love anymore. So I better get out of fear. 
instead of recognizing fear is a wall I put between me and whatever I'm afraid of. And sometimes I give the example when you're a little kid and your parents used to leave the door open and you get to an age where I'm going to close the door now. You don't need a light light anymore. I freaked out on that day, you know, and finally after night after night, I finally snuck the flashlight in my own room and I had the flashlight and I finally got enough courage to look under the bed because I got scared and I had to confront the monster under the bed. And I remember when I did, I found my sense of courage. And I remember it so distinctly, like behind fear is a gift. Yeah. And if you use fear appropriately and don't negative judge fear and recognize, oh, I'm afraid of something. There's something in here. There's a gift behind this fear when I overcome the fear or go through the fear. Most people tend to avoid the fear because they don't like fear. So they judge the emotion. And it's a very important emotion. It tells you when you're in love. It tells you when you're close to to a barrier that you've put up a long time ago. And there's a boogeyman on the other side of this. And all I want to do is stay away from the boogeyman, not realizing as I've evolved, there's a gift behind that fear that I want to grab and I want to retain and I want to put it back in myself. Like my sense of courage could be behind my fear or my will could be hidden behind my fear or my creativity could be hidden behind my fear. If you don't use fear appropriately, which I teach people the fastest way to growth is go through your fears. If you really looked at your fear and you went through each one, what kind of person would you be in no time? You would be overcome and you would be incorporating all the gifts that as you developed, I had taken away from myself out of a fear I wasn't going to have something or a fear that I was limited. So fears are big indicators, some of the first indicators of where you want to break a pattern. And of course, if you were feeling a situation and realize that I was scared, and then if you label that and say, oh, I'm just not in love and I need to get back in love, you never get the gift back. You never understand what fear is there for. And you need to become conscious of what it is I'm afraid. If a bus isn't going to hit you in two seconds, there's nothing to be afraid of except the pattern that I have around this issue. And so in order to take that pattern apart, I need to go through my fear. So fear is your great teacher. It is not something to avoid. And it's never on the other side of love. It's side by side, hand in hand with love. You know, one of the things that I was really struck by, I was thinking about, you know, for many of us, right? We've done things in our lives where initially, you know, maybe it was horrifying to us, right? But Let's talk about the things we've done, and I can give you a couple of examples. You know, was I a little, was I a kind of afraid in a kind of weird way to skydive? I was. Did I skydive anyway? I did. And, you know, yet at the same time, we talk about fear as if it is completely immobilizing, yet we can point time after time after time, we can point to scenarios where we've moved beyond our fear. And yet, was I in that place of love to do that? And I don't make that connection. I mean, I I can't seem to somehow put those black and white pieces together. Does that make sense? You mean the paradox? That yeah, love? yeah. For it to be that simple, you know, uh, it's either going to be fear like or it's going to be uh, love. Right. It, well, that's because it doesn't work. Anything that's you, if you try to simplify something so so much. There's no room to grow out of it. And so as you try to grow with a simplified idea, you create problems that are impossible to solve. It's like in our work, we can't do hypothetical questions because you can't go any deeper with the thinking. It's like Mm -hmm. you have to be able to peel back the layer and peel back the layer. So simplifying things just doesn't. You're you're lifting in complexity is what evolution Mm -hmm. is. It's So it's an upward causation in a way it's upward resonance spiral i need to have the pieces in the next level you know in order to move to the next level it's even music there's an infinite amount of octaves not that we can hear but there's an infinite amount of vibration there's an infinite amount of frequency and it's a duplicating frequency that grows with itself it's not the same thing again again it's a different version and so if I can't understand the functions like fear, like say, what is the first thing it does? It separates me immediately. 
if you're really running emotionally, like synergenetics teaches a person, as soon as I separate from my values, as soon as I separate from the things that give me the good feelings in life, which are the first things we teach a person, in order to not operate from the child or the adolescent, you have to create a set of values that the adult is going to operate from. Once you have this high-functioning set of values, you are in a good place. So if you get scared, you're going to fall all out of your character. I'm going to fall apart. And you're supposed to emotionally recognize, oh, I'm separated from where I was. And the fear is separating me. So let me find out what's in between. What, how did I get separated? And when I reverse engineer the separation, what happens is I can figure out what it is I've been hoping to avoid all this time out of the fear. And so, again, fear and love being either or, it separates the function of what fear is really there for, to open us to the most elegant space to find the love that we've hidden from ourselves behind the fear. And so they go together. They go together. They're not separated. And it's a paradox because they're like, well, how do they go together? They're so opposing and so much. But they really do go together because they're both intense feelings. And it takes love to overcome that fear, to go through that fear. You know, a lot of people go through a fear, you know, because they're afraid of it, but not because I'm looking for to live my values on a greater level because a greater this, sense of self, right? Mm -hmm. for a great, they're going through it maybe for just an adrenaline rush to feel like I'm alive. You know, there's a lot of reasons people you'll still feel this rush after you go through a fear, but the same thing happens when it's what I call a triumph of character. You know, you can have achievements and accomplishments, but what's really a triumph is a victory of character. So when I'm, holding to my values and I go through a fear, the rush that I get is more self-esteem. I get a victory of character. I know that I'm more. I know that I can be more. And I'm so excited to figure that out when I've finally gone through a fear honestly and fully. You will find a higher sense of yourself unless, of course, you're in the past. And then I, I can get a rush, but then I can go through the same fear. Now I'm going to skydive every weekend because I got this rush and so now I'm going for the adrenaline pump and, and actually, you know, I could be risking my life every weekend for a rush rather than a triumph. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that, you know, like when I think about moments in time that each of us has, I know that for me, I had a, at least one tipping point in my life was when I looked in the mirror one day and, and I asked myself, you know, uh, who are you really? Are you going to go back into that really big, well-paying job and do what these folks are telling you to do, even though you know it's not right? And I remember that conversation with myself. Um, and I remember what I was afraid of losing, at least I thought in that moment, what I was afraid of losing by being true to who I was. And that was a value proposition for me, which now that I look back, I talk about it so easily as if, wow, that was uneventful. And yet I look back, it was such a turning point for me, changed the trajectory of my life because I wasn't willing to do something that, that I felt was going to harm other people, right? Uh, and I had to make a decision. I had to make a, a value decision for myself. And was I afraid of what the consequence was? You know, I have to tell you, not when I was thinking about that thing, not when I was looking at the choice that I had. I didn't really say they're going to fire me. And by the way, they did fire me. Um, what was your what gift did you get? Did you find your self-reliance? What did you find by that choice? Because going through that fear, and, and the reason you remember it, a memory in Latin means to remember, to go back and put together. You don't have a past. The only days you remember yeah. something is because something powerful happened to me positively or something powerful happened to me negatively. And so you're talking about a powerful memory that added, contributed to who you were. And it was a pivotal moment. It's like working with us is a pivotal moment, not only in this lifetime, 
And that's part of this work. I know what mm-hmm. I'm doing to your matrix of who you are to make a pivotal, a monumental shift in your beingness that not only changes this lifetime, it resonates through all the rest. It's exactly how I got back in this body was to be able to recognize where I was at this time and the monumental experience I was having. So it's like, now you just want to say, what did I learn? Because here's what you'll discover. If you sit down and go, what did I really get in myself? Was it courage? Was it self-reliance? Was it some gift you got that day that's been resonating Mm -hmm. ever since? And now that's one of your values. Because if I could articulate the word, I will always find power in that word if it's part of who I am is my character. If self-reliance was part of my character and I learned it that day and I incorporated, I know self-reliance excites me. And so to be more self-reliant, you know, again, self-reliance, if you get too much self-reliance, you end up not receiving. So self-reliance can be a prison in itself over time. But when you first get self-reliance, it opens you to so much more power, so much more ability to choose my direction, my destiny. Destiny is a destination. So with self-reliance, I can choose my destiny. I can choose the destination that I'm going for. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, you know, for me, that one incident, that that incident literally did change the trajectory of my life. And so the lesson for me was that I have the right to live my life and to live my life in a way that aligns with who I am and who I want to become in the world. And the minute that I decide that I'm going to live my life because of the way you want me to live or because of the way you want me to present myself for your being. And it doesn't align with whatever that is I'm about. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. And in that moment, I stopped being a prisoner. I stopped being a prisoner of somebody else's view of me, how to get that next job, what to do for that next promotion, how to keep climbing up the ladder and pleasing, 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 you know, and one ultimatum after the other. If you do this, then you'll get this. That was the moment where that stopped for me. And a lifetime of that, maybe, maybe many lifetimes of that, you know, that's where I not just change the legacy of my own history, but even my family's history. And that was the thing for me that I was never going to to go back to living my life for somebody else's needs, desires, wishes, um, and to do it in a way That had nothing to do with mutual respect, but to do it out of fear. If I do, if, if you ask me to do this, then you will give me this false sense of job security. And I ran that I, I, you know, it was that day in time for me where it was like, nope, I am not playing that card again. Nope. I was done with it. So the word it sounds to me was authority. You found your authority that day Mm -hmm. and you started offering your own destiny. Mm -hmm. From mm-hmm. that point on. So mm-hmm. authority was, was on the other side of my fear. And freedom keeps coming up for me because I feel like... Well, authority offers you yeah. great freedom. Mm-hmm. So it's like freeing yourself up to be who you truly feel you are. Mm-hmm. But I see that's the blessing of the work that you do with folks, right? Because you see, you know, I do this show because hopefully folks hear something where they don't have to go through 40 years of that particular compromise in life, right? Because it's not like I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, it's not like I wasn't going through my life and and conscious and aware that I was making this trade-off. I was. Most people have to, at this particular point, because they don't understand they're conscious of their own belief constructs. So what they do is they go through a pattern until it's so excruciating that I have to change now. So they lose some of their authority in a sense. If I knew that this was not good for me 10 years ago, what was it that I I was too afraid to go mm-hmm. through something? I was too afraid to go through whatever it was. And so I repeat the pattern, repeat the pattern. And then eventually sometimes people's physical bodies break down before they change. You know, and so maybe in their sickness, they recognize 
Oh, mm-hmm. I need to change everything. I need to get rid of this husband or this wife. And I need to get rid of this job now because I'm dying and this is my last chance. And they do. They get healed and they have a whole nother life. Yep. It's not because of the it's not because of the illness. It's because of the choices that they finally made, you know. People always on their deathbed are trying to take responsibility for the things they didn't respond to earlier. And we see it all the time. People do stay in their pattern for years and years and as sad as that is, it's beautiful when they awaken to the need for change. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sad and it's fortunate because they can change it. Yeah, but isn't this the power of the work that you're doing? I mean, we started, oh, you yeah. know, talking about this earlier when we were talking about, you know, the this, this, you know, open to the power of the between. And isn't this the core of what you both ha- have said yes to in your lives to help people with. Because, you know, not everybody is going to be as fortunate as, as I am. But if you're listening to this show today and you're wondering, you know, how am I going to do that thing? How am I going to, you know, leave behind maybe this thing that's not working? They can work with you. And this is where the power of synergenetic living helps people literally open that doorway to freedom. Isn't that, I mean, isn't that what yeah. we're really talking about here today? Exactly. I, I, there isn't a single pattern that a human being's living right now that I can't move them through. Right. And not according to what I think. Right. It's according to the relationship between us. I will find the connector between us and I will explain it in a way and mirror people in a way that they will not only understand what they have to do, but given within the character and integrity of who they are as a person to have the action reflect who they are. So it's not like, well, I know I have to do this and I just can't. They, they just don't know how to do it in alignment with their greater self. So as we're listening, this is sometimes where the Enneagram becomes very powerful tool to use because when you understand how a person's inherently wired and you can bring that awareness to the person, they'll start realizing, oh, you know, the, these four hurdles are what I have to go through when I'm scared. I first, I don't really get scared. I actually get angry. Like you said early in the call, lots of times, you know, I realize a person was angry, but I realized on a deeper level, they were afraid. And so the anger is a cover for the fear because they don't like feeling fear. So they've got to feel something. So they convert it to anger and they get really angry around the things they don't want to confront rather than dealing with what they're afraid of because I don't like fear. So my automatic impulse is to reject fear, to push it to the side, to not understand, oh, this is my North compass. This is telling me right now what I'm supposed to be doing. So I take the pattern apart and in the process of figuring out what their true values are, because that's part of the work for us to uncover. What is this individual's values? What, what really turns them on in life? And then to, to, to articulate those in a way and keep bringing them back. Like, these are your values. So you're not living, let's say, authority is my value. In this particular instance, how can we author? We need to author a different way to do it, right? So I'll take them through their own process. So by the time they learn how to get through their hurdles, they know that these aren't these aren't resistances and limitations. They're posts on this. They're signs on the road to my change. And since every person has a specific combination of change, once they're aware of their combination, they can either mitigate it properly, responsibly, or they eliminate it properly or responsibly. And ideally, we want them to eliminate it. But at first, we give them a way to. It's like uh, if you ever knew this about people who run hurdles in races. If you take the hurdles away from a hurdler, they're actually slower without them. Yes. They need those hurdles. And so do we, we need the hurdles. We're the ones that put those in place. So instead of becoming blockages, impedances, limitations, they become the signpost. Oh, wow. I'm in fear. Okay. Um, this is going on. I know how to translate my own process in a way that I can, understand how to respond to the outside world without blaming, without judging, without taking away from, from anything. And so that's the, that's, that's part of the process that synergenetics is. It's a synergy between things and it's a process that I self author. I'm creating my own map 
And mm-hmm. if I understand the way that my genes, the way that I'm genetically predisposed to do something, I can technically alter those. And that's another thing they've already proven. DNA is not static. It mutates as you develop. And it's really a, for a reflection, beliefs precede experience. Your DNA is really the programming of your own beliefs. When you change a belief, your DNA shifts. That's what's happening. And then yeah. the physical world shifts. Go ahead. Well, I want to make sure, Grace, can we give out your 800 number so people can call you directly? Because I think this is really for, for those of you tuning in. I want to make sure that you have the number to call Rick, to call Grace, to schedule time with them. Because we're living in this world where multidimensional beings and we're living in a world where we believe we don't have choices, where we've run out of options, where decisions are being made for us. And so, you know, there's this tipping point that you can get to with some help and get through it quickly. And that's what I want to make sure Grace has. Very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, that's what I said before. You don't want to be like me and take 40 years to figure that thing out. No No. way. Uh, This is bringing an elegance and a grace to your growth and using your your patterns to release yourself because mm -hmm. that's why they're there. They're telling you where I'm limited. Not where there's a problem. And it's not a reframe at all. This is this understanding is what was the, what did that pattern oh, yeah. do you? Like at one point, that was a liberating pattern. You grew and changed because of it and it's no longer serving you. So how do we take the good stuff, incorporate it into who you yeah. are and who you're becoming and dropping off the constricting stuff? So it, it becomes very elegant and it's very much your own. You'll know how you changed it. Yeah. Um, And the reason I want you guys to, to share this is because, you know, once I made that decision, everything, I did lose my job, but I didn't, you know, I gained a life that I would have never gotten. Yes. I wouldn't be here talking with you today. And by the way, we should mention this. I did not have to go back and revisit that thing right? That thing. I had, I had parts of it that came back and because I didn't have you both and I didn't have the tool, I didn't know what to do except to go through the thing again and have to have that experience of freedom. But people can work with you and get changes that are real so that whatever is next can be addressed. You you do have an 800 number, Grace. Uh, what is the best way for people to contact you? Uh, call you, I think, is the best way at this point, right? Yeah. So it's 888-872-8812. And I know that's a lot of eights, but you can also find it on our website. It's, it's up there. Synergeneticliving.com. But I'm going to give it again. 888-872-8812. One, two. And the reason that this is an important conversation for all of us to be having now is there's a lot going on in the world. And so there are a lot of things, a lot of pathways to freedom that you don't have to spend the time to do all this to loan to figure it out. And I think, Rick, that is something in itself to, to learn and make the choice that we don't have to go through stuff by ourselves, that there are ways for you both to help people. Exactly. And mm-hmm. and that's understanding that the physical experience is a synergy between me and possibility. Mm. And the more I can read between the lines, possibility is unlimited. The only one in the dynamic is me. I'm limited by the very structures I need to repeat so I can grow, so I can be safe every day in my oftentimes limiting structure. But it is safe. And it's understanding that I need to be able to define what that structure is and start building it out. Because Mm. even money, it's the same thing. If you don't have enough money and you're struggling with money, it's because there's a lot of beliefs about your self-worth and your value and the way you can receive or not receive. Or, you know, sometimes with people who are very self-reliant, it comes a problem later because now I don't receive. I'm so into doing it myself that I don't receive help from anyone. Matter of fact, I don't even think to ask most of the time. I just take care of it myself. That's yeah. an indicator that self-reliance freed me and now is inhibiting me. It's to, to, Now I need to redefine what self-reliance is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once you understand that that's a value, if it is, 
you'll understand, oh, it's time for me to expand the way I see self-reliance, you know, to be able to incorporate. If I'm not receiving, I'm not able to contribute. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. You know, wow. I need to receive more so I can be a greater force of teaching, of learning, of whatever it is that you're. That's our next show. That's our next show. Uh, I would love to have this conversation about self-reliance because you're right. You know, there's a point by which, you know, I puff my chest out because I think I'm self-reliant and yet I miss so many opportunities of what the exchange of things might be. And if you're well, living in values, if the more values that you can have, you're like, okay, I know now authority is a value of mine. Self-reliance is a mm-hmm. value of mine. Now I know that. And then I start realizing, wow, if I want to be a bigger force in the world, I'm going to have to receive. I can't do all this by myself. It's starting to, you know, <laughs> if you start feeling like I'm getting overwhelmed, I'm working too many hours every day. That's what you're supposed to notice emotionally. Like I'm feeling limited by something. Let me figure out what that limitation oh, is, remove it. And now I'm working 20 hour weeks and receiving the same thing. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio for the latest on Synergenetic Living Radio with Rick and Grace Paris. Learn how to get clear on the life you desire. Synergenetic Living is a living, breathing, conscious experience. Rick and Grace will teach you the art of utilizing the future to create the now with a sense of artistic and absolute power, having dominion without domination. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, or to download an episode of Synergenetic Living Radio, visit SynergeneticLiving.com. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.